me get adjusted here. Make this tighter. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's a little bit on an angle. Um, <laughs> sorry. I'm trying to adjust this. Uh. <laughs> okay. Hi there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to adjust the video camera. I guess it's going to have to stay a little bit crooked there. Uh, today... I want to share on the power of the body and the blood and it is one of the most awesome revelations that I have ever had. I've written a small book on it and I'm going to go over that real quick and that's kind of old news to probably all of you and to me but some really cool revelation that God has given me and I take communion almost every day and it is so powerful. Uh, but first I want to kind of go over the basics. Um, I wrote a little book on communion. It's only a couple pages long so it's only available on Kindle but it, it's there if you want to get it and it's free if you are on Kindle Unlimited. Basically, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> should have brought some water. Basically, the covenant is between two peoples or two people groups. And the covenant is always sealed with blood. Uh, it's one of the oldest promises that a person can make. And we have a blood covenant. The New Testament is a blood covenant. It's, it's our new exchange. A covenant is always an exchange. So, in the New Covenant, the New Testament, uh, this is how it was, it was done. The Old Testament was sealed in the blood of Jesus, and then the New Testament uh, has new rules, regulations, or and blessings that are the same as the Old, but even better yet. Okay, so the blessings, oh, well, let me start here. Um, covenants was made when we exchanged names, so Jesus... We exchanged names and we now bear the name of Jesus. Weapons were exchanged in a covenant. So our weapons are in Ephesians 6. The whole armor of God and the hosts of heaven are our weapons. And this is just some stuff in my book here, but I'm going to go over some even better stuff in a few minutes. So hang with me with some of this basic stuff you probably already know. <clears throat> when you take communion, um, you want to do this in remembrance of me, is what the Bible says. And what that means is, that means everything that the blood of Jesus accomplished is what you want to be thinking about and meditating on. For example, uh, by his stripes you are healed. On the cross he took all those whippings so you would receive healing, and that's what the body represents. On the cross he took the crown of thorns, which means the curse on the earth. You are redeemed from the curse of the earth, Galatians 3.13. You are redeemed from all the curse, the curse of Abraham and everything else. Instead of following those rules, you are led by the Holy Spirit. So... The new covenant, what it's saying is, instead of following thou shall not, thou shall not, the new covenant is being led by the Holy Spirit, which is better because he will not just, he won't say thou shall not, but he'll say, okay, uh, instead of saying don't have, don't commit adultery, he'll say massage your husband's feet when he gets home or make him a better lunch or whatever. So you're being led by a relationship rather than a set of rules in the new covenant. But that's not even where I'm going with this. Uh, this is, this is really cool this this is i'm just covering some basics now so when you take communion it doesn't matter if you take bread uh sometimes i use bread crackers whatever food i have available <clears throat> oftentimes i'll just use water to represent the blood of jesus and anyone can take communion at any time and it is so so powerful and in a few minutes i'm going to go over why it is so powerful but first i just want to go over some things that you want to do in remembrance of him, the things that you want to remember. You want to go into the Bible and look up everything in the New Testament that it says that by his blood, whatever it said we got by the blood, you want to write that down. I have a little, my confession booklet, my decree booklet that I have, and actually one of my first books, the, the Kingdom Confession booklet that you carry in your pocket with Kingdom Confessions. It's really thick. Um, this is how it started with my confessions. So this book gets made over every couple of weeks because I add new things, new revelations to it. But you want to create some kind of a book or note card or something that talks about what the blood of Jesus does. So start by looking up all the scriptures that talk about the blood of Jesus and then look up all the scriptures that talk about the body of Jesus. Okay. Now, when you take communion, it says you do this in remembrance of me. So you're going to take communion and you're going to look at it. <clears throat> For example, some of mine say... Um, got to get past this stuff I'm going to say in a few minutes and get to the the other part. <laughs> okay, 
So I say, uh, okay, I, I have been brought near by the blood of Jesus. And then I can come boldly to the throne of grace. Okay, so when I take communion, I say, I thank you, God, that I can come boldly to the throne of grace in my time of need. Whenever I have a need, I can come boldly to God. I can go to heaven in heavenly places where I am seated and have a relationship with God. I can engage heaven through communion. Uh, one of the other things it's um, that I have over, I can't find it here. Okay. Uh, I don't have it here because I keep changing it. Um, I can come um, boldly to the throne of grace whenever I need. I can come and sit on daddy's lap. I can come and have a relationship with God. It's a throne of grace. That means I don't have to earn it. I don't have to uh, do things to get there. All I have to do is believe and it's a father-daughter relationship. And I can come to receive. So I can expect to receive whatever it is I need when I come to the throne of grace. And because it's a covenant, it's not just a covenant, but it's a family relationship. Um, and uh, one of the things, the reason that it's about the blood of Jesus is because the testament, the blood, the covenant is not enforced until the person dies. So what Jesus died, so the new covenant, the new testament is about his will and testament. So you want to read everything that the blood of Jesus left us to have. Now, if you, let me go past in some of these pages here. Okay, so let me get out of this, and let me talk about the really cool stuff, okay? Now, when you take, the Word of God says, <clears throat> and I'm a scripture word person, I love the Word of God, I eat, breathe, and sleep the Word of God, I dream the Word of God, I love the Word of God, but I'm also a Holy Spirit girl. The Holy Spirit is my best friend, and He is totally awesome, and you need to be led by the Holy Spirit, and uh, you can back it up with the Word of God. You need both. Okay, not just the word, you'll come religious and rigid and law. But you have to have the Holy Spirit and a relationship with the Holy Spirit because it's all about Him. The Holy uh, Jesus, okay, let's see. Jesus leads us to the Father. He sent back the Holy Spirit to live in us. And the Holy Spirit points to Jesus and Jesus points to the Father. So it's a continuous circle, all three. Um, I think the one I know the least amount is probably Jesus because I spent more time with God and the Holy Spirit than Jesus as my bridegroom. But I did dance with Jesus once as my bridegroom, and that's really cool. And, oh, I did dance with Jesus twice, and I danced in heaven once. So I have a relationship with Jesus, but I more talk to the Holy Spirit because he's living in me, working from the inside out. <clears throat> so back to communion. It's being led by the Holy Spirit. Now, the really, thing, really cool thing about communion, the Word of God says that he who abides in me I will abide in him. If you if you want life, you need to eat the flesh of Jesus and drink the blood of Jesus. And <clears throat> his disciples turned from him when he said that because they thought, "Ooh, this is gross. This is a this is a um, this is a cult practice eating the blood and the body." But it isn't. You got to remember everything that the devil has was God's first, and the devil took it, twisted it around, and and made us afraid and think that things were his, which they never belonged to him anyway. They were God. Everything is sealed in the blood and the body of Jesus. Everything he accomplished is sealed in the body and the blood of Jesus. So, when you take communion, it says, if you eat and drink the body and blood of Jesus, he is living in you. And, and, and the word of God says that when you eat the word, when you eat, put it in front of your eyes and so on, when you take communion, you are... Um, you are eating the flesh and body, the representative of the flesh and body of Jesus. Okay, now, when you're born again, and I hope I can say this the way that God gave me the revelation of this. When you're born again, you're born again by the seed of the word. And all through the Bible, <clears throat> has several books on this about words and how words are seeds. And how being a born again is by the seed, the DNA uh, of God. When Jesus... When, when Jesus was born, the Holy Spirit overshadowed, this is really cool, overshadowed, G, overshadowed Mary and, and put into Jesus the DNA of God, the very seed of God, who he is, the record of God. This is so cool. Get this. The record of God. Because when you are born, you get a DNA, 50% from your mother and 50% of your father's DNA. And encoded on that DNA is the record of everything that has ever happened to that person in their whole life so 
my parents, when my parents um, birthed me, or when I was conceived, 50% uh, of my father's history was on that DNA, 50% of my mother's history. And when they were conceived, 50% of their father and 50% of their mother, all the way back to Adam. Okay, so the record, that's why people get sicknesses and diseases, because the record of their mother and father's past, everything they said, everything they did, their harvest, uh, seeds that they sown, everything is in that DNA, okay? The DNA is the seed, okay? And it records everything about that person. And you get 50 from your mother, 50 from the, your father. That's how it's decided what you'll look like, what things you'll like, what personality and, and so on is in the DNA. Okay, now, when, I guess you can tell I'm pretty excited about this. When you take communion, you're taking the body and the blood, the DNA of God that he overshadowed on Mary to impregnate her. He put inside of Jesus the DNA of God, the history of God. Who God is. The Word of God says we have His divine nature. We are, we have the mind of Christ. We have the body of Christ. We are this uh, one spirit with the Holy Spirit. We are flesh and blood of Jesus. So we are all one. And that is so absolutely cool. So, when God overshadowed Mary in order to create Jesus, He deposited he used his DNA to put inside of Mary to be inside of Jesus' body, physical body, the DNA of God. So when Jesus was born, he had the DNA of God in him. He had the whole record and history of God in him. Now, this is the really cool part. When you are born again, you are born again by the seed of God, the DNA, the word of God. And in that DNA is the whole history of God, the whole history of Jesus, the whole record of everything the blood of Jesus paid for you to have. In other words, <clears throat> the record of Jesus being beat on the cross and carrying every sickness and every disease, the, the, the crown of thorns carrying the curse of the earth of poverty, lack, and fear, the record of of God turning his face from Jesus as he was on the cross and Jesus said you have forsaken me so that we wouldn't be forsaken uh, everything that Jesus blood and body accomplished on the cross is in the DNA when we take communion so what happens when we take communion we are taking the vitamins the minerals the replacement parts Everything from the warehouse of heaven, everything that heaven has that created the human body, we are receiving that into our body. We are being cleansed from the inside out. We should be living from the inside out. Outside circumstances shouldn't affect us. We should affect outside circumstances. We should be changing the situation. The situation should not be changing us. When we take communion, we're cleansing ourselves from the inside out so that we can live by the DNA, the seed of God inside of us. We have his divine nature. That doesn't mean we can be good or do good. It means that we can raise the dead, heal the sick, cast out demons, cleanse the leopards, command the angels, um, put on the whole armor of God, and have a victorious life for ourselves and others. So... Having, taking communion is, to, to me, when I take communion, it's, it's taking vitamins, minerals, and nutrition that my physical body needs that on earth is not as powerful as it used to be. And taking communion, and I hope that I get a better signal because I see I have a weak signal right now, and I'm sorry. I hope it's not breaking up and making me look ugly. Okay. So, when I take communion, these are the scriptures I use, and this is how I do it. I say, um, <clears throat> okay, the word of God is life and health to all my flesh, and I choose life. And that Jesus, through partakers of, because he became flesh, he destroyed him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and delivered those who their whole lifetime were in bondage to the fear of death. So, I say, 
Father, I thank you for the blood of Jesus. I thank you that through the blood of Jesus, I am no longer in bondage of any kind. I am no longer in bondage to the fear of death in Jesus' name. According to Hebrews 2.14, the devil has been defeated. He's under my feet. I have more authority and dominion than him. Uh, and I am brought near by the blood of Jesus. I have boldness to enter the Holy of Holies. And though the, um, see the, the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony, what I'm speaking right now is my victory. And I say, and the word of God says, whoever eats his flesh and drinks his blood has eternal life and eternal redemption. Eternal life is God life, heaven life, heaven on earth. Okay. So when I take communion, I just go over these scriptures. I speak them out loud. I begin to command the angels and send them out and do stuff. To me, communion and sending out the angels is, I do it all in one thing. It's, it's all in one. And <clears throat> I say like, um, I thank God for uh, the DNA that he, he put inside of his record inside of Jesus. And I thank him for that record is inside of me now, cleansing me from the inside out. And that record of the DNA, what the body and the blood of Jesus accomplished out here in the world is now inside of my body accomplishing the same thing. So I begin to speak to my body and I say, whatever, whatever it is that I need, I command it to come because the DNA and the body and the blood of Jesus is now in me. And I expect it to be healed, delivered, set free. Excuse me. I come into the agreement of that. Uh, and then I, um, like Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, uh, Jesus took all my sickness, disease, affliction, sad, sadness, evil, calamity, physical, mental, pain, sorrow, and grief. Uh, he took all my rebellion, my guilt punishment, my transgression offering, um, he, so that I could have completeness, safetyness, soundness, and body, and healed. And that's Isaiah, and that's in, uh, God told me to look up all the words in that scripture. And to use that as my confession. So I say that. I say I receive this body. I receive the blood of Jesus. I receive the vitamins, minerals, and nutrition from heaven for my physical body. The same spirit that raised Jesus' rotten flesh. The flesh that was beat up, ripped up, falling apart. Had guts coming out. Had bones broken. Was in the grave cloths. That same spirit. That same spirit is inside of me making my body alive just like it did Jesus and then I say that um, I apply the blood of Jesus and I I speak to the blood and say transform all of my history all of my history uh, bad history all of my um, genetic history all the history of um, iniquities and all that stuff cleanse it and then I say in Jesus name I am in Christ and Christ is in me and I trigger the ability to um, see in the kingdom realm to transform matter to um, um, let's see let's see uh, to tr to see in this hear smell and taste because I am a spirit being with a physical body. I trigger the ability to see in the spirit realm to walk in the spirit realm, the kingdom realm because it's the kingdom realm. Everything was spiritual before it became physical. The kingdom, the spirit realm is the kingdom realm, and that's the real realm. Everything comes from that. And I just, I just talk about that and, and, and um, take communion and, and receive that. And then I go over things like I am heir of the world. I am joint heirs with Jesus. I have power over all the power of the enemy. Nothing should by any means hurt me. All things are under my feet. Death and life are in the power of my tongue. And Father, I speak, and then I speak whatever I need life to in my body, in my uh, uh, family, in my relationship, ministry, and so on. And I, then, and I start sending the angels out to go and to do whatever it is that I need them to do according to where I am at that place in my life. And I say, Father, I thank you that I'm delivered from the curse. And this is one thing that you need to say if you want to be healthy. Inflammation in your body causes all sicknesses and diseases and stress does too so i just say father i've been delivered from inflammation i i um i trigger the dna of god that is in me the holy spirit in me to cause there to be no inflammation in my body my immune system is enhanced it functions perfectly my liver is detoxed and cleansed and healthy i have no excess weight um my hormones are balanced 
my electrical, magnetic, and chemical fields in my body are balanced. My eyes are healthy, whole, and strong. My teeth are healthy, whole, and strong. There's none missing. Uh, I don't have, uh, I have assurance of life. My life does not hang in doubt day and night. And that's in Deuteronomy 28 on the curses. I look at the curses and I turn them around to make them blessings. Uh, God satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed. I have peace. I have the king of peace living inside of me. I have peace in all situations and circumstances. I have the spirit of wisdom. I know what to do in every situation and circumstances. I have the spirit of wisdom. I listen to wisdom. I dwell safely and securely without the fear of evil. I have understanding. She gives me lengths of days and riches and pleasantness and peace. Wherever I go, wisdom is a tree of life to me. And that is a scripture. Uh, Psalms 103 maybe. I'm not sure. <clears throat> and terror, I'm not afraid of terror and wickedness. And I claim I am ten times smarter than the smartest people in the land because in Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego were ten times smarter than the king's people, and the king's people were always the best. And I, um, I speak to my DNA, and I said, I use more brain power. I use more than 10% of my brain because I've been redeemed from the curse. And I use all of my brain that God wants me to use now that I'm redeemed. And I have the mind of Christ. I have a great memory, and I, I speak those things and so on. Um, I talk about how I desire healthy food, natural fruits and vegetables, how my land is redeemed from the curse of the law, and my gardens and my fruit trees, when I get them, they produce a bountiful, healthy harvest redeemed from the curse of the law. And so you go over... You go over what the Word of God says about you and also what you desire that agrees with God. And when you take communion, you, you receive in you the DNA of God, the very essence of God, the power and the peace and the presence of God, the kingdom of God. And you, by taking communion once, twice, three times a day, you take vitamins every day, you take medicine two, three times a day. Why don't you just take 10 minutes and take communion two, three times a day. It is so powerful. <laughs> I love taking communion. And uh, at the same time, send your angels out to get whatever it is that you need. So that's basically what I wanted to share with you. Uh, oh, one more thing. Very, very important. Um, everything that the blood of Jesus paid for you to have on the cross, uh, he paid for you to be prosperous, to be rich, to have abundance, to have overflow and too much. He paid for you to be healthy, to be whole, to be healed, to... Uh, um, not have any sickness or disease in your body. He paid for you to have peace, not to have any kind of fear, to have power to change situations and circumstances. He gave you uh, power to live on earth like you will in heaven, power to change things. When you see something bad on TV, to change it uh, by commanding the angels and, and prayer. Okay, so everything that the blood of Jesus paid for you to have, listen to this, this is life-changing, is the harvest Okay, Jesus did those things so that you could receive a harvest. It's actually God's harvest. Jesus paid for it, and you're supposed to receive it. So, Jesus paid for you to be wealthy, healthy, prosperous, healed, powerful, have understanding, having wisdom, having knowledge, walking in love. Jesus paid for all that stuff. And he wants you to have the harvest of that. Never, ever, ever does God withhold what Jesus' blood paid for you to have. It's always the devil holding it up. It's always the devil stopping it. If you think it's God, you're going to sit back and say, whatever happens, happens is God's will. That's not true. God's will is for every man to get saved. God's will is for everyone to get healed. He paid the price. He wants the harvest. He wants you to have what the blood of Jesus suffered for you to have. So you have to fight for what is yours. Not from God. You don't beg God. You don't even have to ask him. You just thank him and you receive it. And when you take communion, it's like reinforcing it. Here's the body and here's the blood. And this is what Jesus paid for and I'm going to have it. It's not like, oh God, please, please heal me. Please heal me. No, that's begging that. God does not want that. He wants you to say, hey, listen, God paid for this. Now, devil, you get off of me. You release it. I take what's mine. It's mine. I command you to go in Jesus name. You want to know what's going to happen to you, devil? You're going to be on fire. I'm going to go to heaven someday and be with God. But you had it. You're, you know, you got to talk like that. 
okay? It's your, it's Jesus' victory, and God is happy and smiling when you receive the harvest, healing, prosperity, peace, abundance, health, power, wisdom, success. Jesus paid for it. Now you need to receive it. And so that's all I really wanted to share with you about communion. If you are blessed by this, share it with your friends. Uh, check out all my books. I have 37, I think. Um, all of them are free if you get Kindle Unlimited. That's $10 a month you pay, and it's well worth it. Uh, if not, I give away free a lot. But um, check out the books. I wish I could share with you all kinds of stuff, but I have to do it a little at a time. Anyway, have a blessed, wonderful day. Take communion. It is not a ritual, and it is when people do it uh, and, and die, it's because they didn't receive the knowledge the the understanding that the blood of jesus paid for them to be healthy and living and live they didn't see that they just com took communion and, and didn't take what was theirs okay so my name is robin bremer dot net is my website have a blessed day share with your friends like leave comments i'll try to reply to all of them sometimes it's hard because i get so many and love you all talk to you all later and check out my angels books they're the best selling seeing angels in the clouds real angels hiding in the cloud from the enemy god is beginning to expose them and show the world his beauty through the sky and the angels so talk to you later bye bye